here we are. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Talk. I'm Pastor Rick with Jack Sullivan. Jack, people may be wondering, what's Sullivan? Because your last name is not Sullivan. Your last name is Johnson. Mm -hmm. So what's Sullivan? Can you explain that to everybody real quick? It's my middle name. Jack Sullivan Johnson. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know where that name comes from? The Newsies. Yeah, the Newsies. Anyone know the Newsies movie? That's a great movie. It's older now, but when my kids were little, when, when your mommy was little, we watched that all the time. It's a great story. It's a true story about the newspaper boys in New York City. <clears throat> I don't know what year it was, maybe 1920s or so. And uh, they were called Newsies. And uh, the main character's name was Jack Sullivan. And he was a really strong figure in the movie and a really good guy. So Jack has a, Jack's named after Jack Sullivan. Anyway, let's see who's here today. Hello, Tony. And Tony, God bless you on your birthday. I, I don't know when it was. Was it yesterday or was it Sunday? I get confused on the date. Uh, let us know, Tony, what date, just so I know. Uh, Cece, good to see you. Cece Trombetta. All right, Angela and Roseanne. All right, very good. So if you want to hit your share button, uh, you can maybe we can maybe pick up a few extra people uh, as they you know scroll around and look for things and stumble across your page and see this live stream and maybe they, they would want to join us. So today um, we're going to go through this devotional once again. Hey. <laughs> uh, a Psalm in Your Heart by George O. Wood. This seems to be working out pretty good on Tuesdays. Now, I, I go through this every day. I do one devotional every day. I haven't looked at it today, so this is going to be fresh for me, fresh for you, and certainly fresh for Jack Sullivan. The 3rd, October the 3rd. All right, so that was, uh, that was Sunday, right? October the 3rd, yeah. Well, happy birthday, brother. God bless you. Um, so, Jack, you want to open up a new word of prayer? Okay. Let's pray, everybody. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Now let's have a great Tuesday talk today, and heal everybody's, heal everybody, and give people answers for their problems. Yes, Lord. No matter what it is. Yes, Lord. And um, show us the plans that you have for us today and in the future. And let's have a great day, great Tuesday talk. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jack. Hey. Uh, Grandma, Grams is on there. Hey, Mom, how you doing from Rye, New York? Good to see you down there. Uh, we'll be giving you a call later on today as well. So, All right, so anyway, the, the, we're in Psalm number 15. If you have your Bible or your Bible app, you may want to follow along. You don't have to, but you may, you may want to. Um, and the devotional is actually from the New Ki I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, NIV. Uh, New International Version, although my translation that I use is New King James. It's, it's basically the same, a little subtle differences here and there. But let me read the introduction, and then we'll, we'll go from there. The name of the devotional is called God's Spyglass Hill. And this is probably the third or fourth time that I've gone through these, this devotional. Uh, although it's over the last several years. I go through it, and then I put it down, and I go through it again. Uh, although this one, I went through this book, and then this, the part two of this book go, goes through Psalms 76 to 150. This is 1 through 75. So it took a while to go through that. Now I'm back in this one, and I don't really remember what the Spyglass Hill was. So let's read it and find out. And then you can help me read the scriptures, okay? And what do you have in your little baggie over there? What is it? Gummy bears, make sure you save me some. I don't want to eat them now because it'll make my mouth all gummy. Okay. Not far from where we live in Southern California lies Spyglass Hill, a, a promontory of multi-million dollar homes with sweeping panoramic views of Newport Beach and Corona Del Mar, Saddleback Mountain, and the gorgeous blue Pacific waters flecked with white sails and flag-decked yachts. I've always wanted to live on Spyglass Hill. One thing keeps me out. What does it say? Money. Money. Can't afford it. 
When David writes Psalm 15, he too is looking at a place with a view. From his palace on the hill of old city Jerusalem, David looks upward to the hill on the north <clears throat> where the temple would one day stand. Yet he also spiritually gazes far beyond into heaven and asks, Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? Would you like to go to heaven and dwell with God? Would you? Nope. Me too. Not right now. <laughs> I know. How can you get there from here? The Lord answers by telling us to start living now as though we were residents of his holy hill. We are to live on earth with no less than heavenly behavior. All right, so let's read verse number one. You want to read it nice and loud, Jack? Right there. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? And read number two while you're at it. He whose walk is blameless and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart. Ah, so that's the ticket. So the first little subheading is called blameless. Oh, let's see. You want to read this one, Jack? I think you can handle that. Can you read that nice and loud? Okay, so this is based on verses 1 and 2. Who can go to his holy hill? In other words, who could make it to heaven? Someone who is blameless. But we have to think about that. Go ahead. Blamelessness is mentioned first because it cap capsulizes all the succeeding traits listed. It signifies completeness in right conduct. A life lived in agreement with God's moral and spiritual law, living truly, rightly, justly, and with complete integrity, without evident or secret sin, secret sin which brings reproach. The entrance requirement is impossible. Who can <laughs> meet it? Unless someone helps us, we will never get to the holy hill on our own. Well, yeah, because the scripture says uh, there is none holy, you know, all have sinned and fall short. All, everybody has something. So when David writes this, when he writes, Lord, who may go to your, who may dwell in your sanctuary and live on your holy hill? The answer is he whose walk is blameless and who does what is righteous. But none of us could do that. So the first requirement is like something we can't do, which sets us up for number two. So this, the third verse says this, and... Uh, he has no slander on his tongue. Uh-oh, now it gets personal. So the, the verse 2 talked about someone who's blameless, who does what is righteous and speaks the truth from his heart. Number, the second issue is number, verse number 3. And there's no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong and casts no slur on his fellow man. Okay, why don't you read? The second issue is tongue control. Everyone say that, tongue control, controlling the tongue. The two most difficult tasks of the tongue are being truthful and not running down others. Mm. Liars and slanderers will not get inside this, the gate of God's holy hill. I must not wrong my neighbor by s slurring. slurring him. Citizens of heaven do not gossip. The law imposes upon me a duty not to injure someone. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. You know, there's another scripture in James. Let me see if I can find it real quick. That talks about the tongue. So the tongue, the tongue, the tongue, the tongue. In James chapter, uh, James chapter 3, it says this. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths. You know what a bit is? Mm -mm. It's that thing that goes into a horse's mouth and it goes into this, the, uh, not, not the saddle, but the harness. And, and with that, you could steer the horse. Um, that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. So the tongue, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members 
that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. And no one could tame the tongue, it says. It's unruly. It's full of dead, deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and curse our neighbor. And, and he says, this shouldn't be. There's only one way to get the tongue under control. And we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Yeah, so your mommy said she loves how David asked the Lord twice, who can go to this holy place? Who can go there? Uh, okay, so let's let's go back. So we're, we're in Psalm 115. Uh, don't forget to hit your share button, everybody. And uh, so he's the question is, who can get to that holy place where the Lord is? So verse number two says, he who's blameless and does what is right, speaks the truth. Verse number three says, he who, who never slanders his brother, never, never, you know, never says bad things or, you know, talks bad or gossips. These are very difficult things to accomplish. Okay, number three is this, discrimination and association. Verse number four says, who, who can enter the holy place? He who despises a vile man but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts. So let's read this one, Jack. Discrimination and association. I am to avoid vile persons, but honor those who feel God. Who are the vile? Those who cannot be trusted to tell the truth, who run others down, do their neighbor wrong, don't keep their word, make money illicitly. Right, good. And whose ends justify their means. I am to keep in balance joining Jesus as a friend of sinners without participating in a wrongful life lifestyle. All right, so that, that big word uh, illicitly means uh, illegally, making money illegally. So I am to keep in balance joining Jesus as a friend of sinners without participating in a wrongful lifestyle. All right, so let's go to the next issue here. Um, the verse number five says, he who lends his money without usury, that means without interest, and does not accept a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. So I have two things to think about here. The next one is, is called fidelity, fidelity to commitments. So keeping your word. All right, you want to read that one, Jack? I must keep my word even when it hurts. Faithfulness is never tested when all goes well. Rather, I am pressed to be unfaithful when I consider my personal happiness over the duty to keep obligations I have made. God will never approve if I forsake duty for personal happiness and satisfaction. All right, so this is a very tall order, you know? Uh, keeping my word. You know, lately when I perform uh, weddings, and uh, recently we had three weddings in a row on three successive weekends, which was pretty amazing. But um, I always kind of pause before the wedding vows um, and the marriage pledge is, is, uh, is said. I always tell the couple that your words, uh, in spite of what our culture says, let me get you a little bit closer here. Jack, can you move in a little bit? Uh, our words are very important uh, in spite of what culture says, in spite of what, you know, how, how we may have lived up until this point. So when they say, I will take thee to be my wife or husband, and, um, you know, I give you my heart, I'll, I promise, I pledge to love you, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the words, the value of words is so important. I always say, our, our word is our bond. And when you say this, it's being kind of listened to and recorded by the Lord, by the minister, by the family and friends, and by your spouse as well. So anyway, words are very, very important. So someone who keeps their word is, is, will be uh, uh, entitled to enter the holy place. And then uh, the last thing is about, is about money. And uh, Jack, why don't you read right up to here, okay? So this is, this is based on verse number five. I must not earn money by abusing others, nor put others at a disadvantage so I can get what I want. The person who lends with 
Ushery. U usury. 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 Which is charging more interest that is, than is fair. Takes advantage of another's desperate need. As a Christian, I am never to cheat others or economically oppress them. Even if you do not accept a monetary bribe, you can fail in God's requirements if you accept the bribe of personal advancement as a reward for doing in someone else. In a cutthroat world, the Lord calls us to moral goodness. All right, so let's go back and recap this. There's only five verses in this, in this psalm. But the question is, Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? So David's asking the question, as, as your mom said, he's asking the question twice. Who can get to where God is? And the first answer is someone who's blameless. Right? That's verse number two. Whose walk is blameless. The second issue is uh, someone who doesn't slander. So someone who controls their tongue. Very important. And then uh, the third one is based on verse number four, who despises the vile man but honors those who fear the Lord and keeps his oath. And uh, so, so you, would have, you would say here, avoid vile people, but associate, and, 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 uh, associate with those that honor the Lord. So choosing your company is really important. And then he talks about your words. Keeping your words. Your word is your vow, and your word, keeping your word is important. And then the last one is uh, not exploiting people with, from, you know, taking advantage of them financially. So these are some pretty tall orders, especially the first one. Who can say that they're, bl are you blameless, Jack? Do you ever do anything wrong? Yes, I do. Isn't that unfortunate to say? But it is the truth, and I'm glad you answered truthfully. Uh, now, now, being being uh, not being blameless doesn't make us necessarily, uh, you know, bad, evil, you know, but it does make us realize that no matter how hard we try, we just can't seem to get it right all the time, you know. And there's many scriptures that talk about that. Even though we try, we, we there's always something. First uh, John talks about that quite a bit. That if we say we have no sin, even the Christian person. We make ourselves, we, we make the Lord a liar, and the, the truth is not in us. So that may not mean that we're actually practicing something sinful, but we have this sinful nature. And uh, that, that whole thing is just puts us in a dilemma. Let me read the last part of this little devotional, and we'll see uh, where it's taking us here. So it, it says this, David concludes this psalm by noting end results. God wants heaven to be populated by persons who have incorporated his personality into their lives. So if you think about it, the Lord is blameless. The Lord controlled his tongue. The Lord uh, avoids the vile but honors the righteous. The Lord always kept his word and the Lord would never take advantage of people financially. So, in a sense, you could say what David is talking about is the character and nature of God. And who could be like that? But let's go on. Uh, such persons will not only feel at home in heaven, they will have personal stability on earth. Because he says in the end of the Psalm 15, verse number 5, He who does these things shall never be moved or shaken or taken off guard, or um, will never be, you know, will never be in trouble. David's desire to live on God's spyglass hill shows us how much we really need Jesus. Can somebody say amen right there? Tony, I'm going to get to those scriptures in un momento. None of us can completely fulfill the perfection God seeks for his citizens. And may I say, that's why we need Jesus. You need Jesus, I need Jesus, you all need Jesus, everybody needs Jesus. Because none of us are perfect. Even though some of us like to think from time to time that I am per that I am per or you are perfect. Thus, Jesus came out from heaven to live a perfect life in our <laughs> what is that word right there? In our dump. In our dump. Anyone ever been to a dump? I don't know about dumps nowadays, but when I was a kid, Mom, you remember, I used to go with Grandpa to the Rye City dump every now and then, and 
throw out stuff and look around, but it's not a pretty place. Uh, he did all the things asked for in Psalm 15. Jesus did all the things asked for in Psalm 15. If we place our faith in him, we can be assured he will take us to where he is now. In the meantime, he will help us begin behaving on earth as we will for all eternity. So let me, let's read this again. Jack, I want you to read this. I'm going to ask you to read the whole thing, okay? So you have to read all these over here. So we're going to read Psalm 15 in the NIV. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? He whose walk is blameless and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart and has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong and casts no slur on his fellow man, who despises a vile man, but honors those who do who feel the feel fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts, who lends his money without usury and does not accept a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. You know, I just thought of something. Like for David to write all that, and that was really inspired by the Holy Spirit. Uh, but for for the Old Testament saints to know all that. Boy, they must have been frustrated because they could never keep the law. But as we studied in Romans a little while ago, um, the law pointed people uh, in the direction of, well, none of us could keep the law. But it tells us we need somebody else to help us fulfill the law. And so that's when we place our trust in the Lord that uh, all those requirements of the law are complete, not in us, but in Him. So when we believe in Him, uh, that righteousness is imputed or given to us. What a wonderful arrangement. Uh, all we need to do is believe and profess faith in Jesus. And, you know, belief is like, uh, it's a twofold sword. A part of it is our decision to believe. And part of it also is God's Holy Spirit calling us to believe. Because the scripture says we, we must be born again, but we're born again by the Spirit. And so the Spirit draws us, and the Father calls us through the Spirit. And we agree, we make a decision to agree with that. And then our belief in, in His calling puts put together creates our salvation. So our job as a church, just like my friend uh, Lenny Stadler many years ago, uh, his role in my life was to, was to tell me very clearly about having a relationship with Jesus, how to do that, and, and what's, what's my role in it, what's his role in it, what's God's role in it. And uh, he helped Pamela and I realize we had to make a decision. And so we made that decision. All right, let's go back here just a minute. Uh, Tony said in Proverbs 15, 4, a gentle tongue is a tree of life. Oh, yeah. And Proverbs 18, 21 says, there's death and life in the power of the tongue. Absolutely. Those are some of my favorite scriptures. And uh, with our tongue, we could either kill or give life. And uh, the way we speak and what we say is really, really very important. Sometimes we may be saying the right things, but we say it with the wrong tone or the wrong attitude or the wrong whatever. Jack, you're, you're building something over here, and I, I don't know exactly what. Can I show everyone what you're making? You can have these gummy bears. So, so Jack saved me these gummy bears, but he stapled them all together, so I can't get them out. But I'm going to cut this thing open right after we're off this live stream. Those are my feelings. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Safety pins and paper clips and staples. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I wanted to read something in Philippians chapter 2 because... Uh, this is a corresponding scripture uh, before we say the final prayer here. But in Philippians chapter 2, uh, we, Paul, Paul writes something that uh, we understand it to be doctrinal regarding, regarding um, what Jesus did for us. And it's true, this is doctrinal, but... It wasn't meant to be doctrinal. It was meant to be an example to the church of Philippi on how we should live. We should live the way Jesus lived. And so in that presentation of how we should live, Paul is giving us doctrine, which is really important. So, 
Hey, Mr. Jack Sullivan. How about if I read one verse and you read one verse and then I read one verse and you read one verse? Want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Let this mind, okay, Philippians 2, verse 6, verse 5, rather. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance of, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even, t even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the other earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more than in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So we're going to stop right there. That's verse 13. So... Uh, let's face it, we're up the creek without a Savior. But Jesus came, as it says in Philippians 2, uh, and, and, and the point was in verse 5, let this mind, let this attitude, let this understanding be in you that was in Jesus. And what was in Jesus was, he was in the form of God, but emptied him. He left heaven and came to live on earth to be a servant, to pay the price for our sinful nature. And he became a bondservant, and uh, he appeared like a man, but he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, and died on the cross. And uh, therefore, because of what he did, uh, the Father then exalted him. As you know, he was dead for three days, but he arose on the third day. He ascended into heaven. He released the Holy Spirit, but the Father exalted him. And now every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. As it says here, those in heaven, those on earth, and even those under the earth, those that have been condemned to an eternity in hell, will, will also have to bow and confess that he is Lord, even though they'll be sentenced. So um, therefore, he says, therefore, as you have always obeyed, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, because God's working in you to, to perfect you to do his good pleasure. So going back to Psalm 15, Jack, you're, you're busy, and I, I, I hear a lot of staples over there. I, I'm never going to get that open. you got to cut it. Oh, That's man, where are those scissors? i got to get those scissors back. Where'd you put them? Um, All right, anyway. Okay, so who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? Those who walk uprightly and work righteousness and speak the truth in his heart. Oh Jesus, Lord, help us to help us to do that. We're we're not we're not blameless. We are all guilty of sin. Forgive us and strengthen us. Those who don't backbite with his tongue nor do evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, Lord God. And think about Jesus, by the way. He was reviled. He was spoken of badly, lied about. Uh, he was hurt physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, criticized. And uh, he just turned the other cheek. You know, he just turned the other cheek. Lord, help us to be like that. Uh, in whose eyes a, a vile person uh, is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord, um, who swears to his own hurt and does not. I'm reading from New King James now. But Lord, help us to honor those that honor you and to avoid people other than witnessing to them. Avoid people that may pollute our character and our spiritual makeup. Uh, one who does not put out his money in usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Um, Lord, help us to, uh, to use our money honestly and, and, and for good purposes. 
And Lord, it says, he who does these things shall never be moved. And so we have to say, Lord, only with your help can we do these things. What do you think, Jack? What do you think about all that? We have to read this prayer right here. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to say this prayer, and then uh, <laughs> we're going to um, close out. And pr- well, Jack's going to say this prayer, then I'm going to say another prayer. So, Jack, why don't you lead us in this prayer right here? Lord, I want to live on your holy hill. I have failed the citizenship requirements, and Mm. on my own, I could never get to your eternal dwelling. Thank you for coming to die for me so I could live forever. Help me today to live a little heaven on earth. Yes, Lord. Father, help us to get the idea that our eternal life really begins right now. It begins before we ever get to heaven. So Lord, help us to live on earth the way you would want us, you, you, the way we will live in heaven, with honesty, integrity, with character, with good thoughts and, and intentions. In other words, Lord, help us to live under the blood of Jesus Christ, forgiven and empowered. Lord, for anyone on here today, we just pray for one another that we would all have a walk worthy of the calling that you put upon our lives. We surrender to your Lordship today. And Lord, we ask you to come in, forgive us of our sins, and empower us by your Spirit to live a godly life here on earth. Lord, your word tells us to be salt and to be light. Help us to live like that among our families, at our workplace, in our friendships, even as we shop in the marketplace. Let us be, let us be the salt and light that you talk about in Matthew 5. So Lord, thank you for this. I thank you for Jack Sullivan. We pray your blessing over him and his family, and we pray for your will to be done in each of our lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, We'll see you soon. Uh, Be checking our Facebook page for what's going on. And anyway, have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.